Predict or follow, always the question we have, and prediction is one way, follows another. I'm going to talk about that to you in a minute. Hi, my name is Richard Lee. I manage the stockwriter.com.au website for you. Stockwriter's aim is to educate, educate, educate you. Price analysis process and capital management make a powerful duo, and most of our work is centered around this. Okay, fairly simple. Predictions are fraught with danger. They can go wrong very easily, and you can hang on to them for too long. Following puts you in an odds-on position to win, okay? It's the easiest way and simplest way. <clears throat> we would love to predict and be right, but really the easiest way is to follow the lead and trend and jump on for the ride. That's it, okay? Um, trend, it doesn't matter what any expert says, <clears throat> or any other market commentator or analyst for that matter, they can agree or disagree with my position. But I know it's the movement in price that will determine the outcome, so it's that movement I must understand. I learned to use it to my advantage to follow a trend, and that will inevitably be the way the momentum is found. Stock like APA is one we're going to have a look at a bit later on. Don't need many to make money, you need the good ones, okay? Catching momentum. Momentum is simply jumping on price movement that's already in motion. And that's the easy part. Predicting is always a difficult thing. So that's what I want to focus on today, getting a real perspective, keeping it fairly simple, okay? So let's get to our markets to start off with. And um, the first one, as usual, is the Dow Jones. And we're having a little bit of a rally. Moment of lucidity, which is fantastic, okay? So uh, nothing really has come of uh, breaking any resistance levels or anything like that. There's no real volume down here, you can see, and momentum is still weak. Markets go up and down all the time. Uh, and in downtrends, they go down more than up, and in uptrends, they go up more than down, and it's simple. that's a simple process. Okay, so we look at the NASDAQ. It's had a bit of relief there. It's, it's come down the worst. We're getting a reasonable rally. We're getting a little bit of a reaction from our tech stocks this week. So that's good, but once again, we can see the volume's not really there. The confidence isn't really there in these rallies, and momentum is still weak. So although we might have hit support level, which I've sort of modified a little bit here just to reflect where we are, um, you know, we really need to overcome some other areas yet to become confident of this market going higher. So that's the overseas indices markets. Dr. Copper still going down, um, you know, fairly weak, heavy volume, momentum weak. We're not even going to worry about that too much. It's got further to go down. Gold hanging by a thread. Okay, it's right on the support level here, hanging on against the odds here. And you can see down the bottom here, there's quite an amount of selling pushing at this price, but there's obviously a bit of buying holding at the moment because the price doesn't move. That's a good sign. But the volume here is pushing this price down. It's just this last week that we looked at here. So it's hanging on for the moment, but this is turning negative. So it's a fairly negative picture all in all. Okay, Brent crude. Um, let me just put this volume down again. Okay, it's holding the range. It's within this range. It's been, you know, oil is a fairly, usually a fairly volatile commodity. Um, and it is fairly stayed at the moment between this 100, 120 level. It's good selling at, at R1, big buying at S1. And that's really the range at the moment. We really can't predict the future, apart from the fact saying that the trend is up overall. So at this stage, it's more likely to break up than down. But we'll hold that thought for the moment. The range has been contained. Some sellers are showing up. Okay, momentum is slowing. Selling challenge isn't bad for, for, a moving, for a market that's moving up, okay? It's when the selling starts to push the price down like copper um, that that's when we worry. So for the moment, this one here is okay for Brent crude. So we're hanging in there for the moment. Okay, now let's get to the XJO. Um, it again has had a bit of a rally with a bit of a moment. You can see how far down we've come since... Um, since about April, so we've come down an awful long way. So this rally is a bit of a mini rally at the moment. Nothing really uh, has been overcome yet. This is still weak down here. Um, we are getting a smattering of interest in our portfolios at the moment. Just to go through, the, the actual big stock radar portfolio is up two stocks to 20. So I've got 18 stock picks and two ETFs in there at the moment. The conservative portfolio is still at three out of 20, putting it at 15% equity, 85% cash. The Energizer portfolio has just jumped to 5 out of 5, which puts it at 100% equity, and the 10 stock is up to 7 out of 10. So they've jumped a bit, those two, which is interesting. We've pulled in a couple of energy stocks there, uh, a couple of transports, so that's quite an interesting market. Um, we're hoping for some runs there. Um, for full list of all sector rankings and stock radar stock picks, go to Stock Radar's Trading Centre. Two sectors at the top are utilities and energy, and they're the ones that we uh, have got most exposure to at the moment. So that's how the, the market generally looks from a background. Now we can go look at some specific stocks, okay? 
I just spent a bit of time last week, and I was quite a long way. I was up in the snow, and I had the time. But we're back here this week, so I'll try and keep this a bit more, a bit more punchy and a bit more quick this week, because I know you all time poor. Although having said that, now at the moment with things sort of settling down, and not a lot of stock picks, we've got time to to review things and assess things and take a step back, which is always always a good thing. So aristocrat, it sort of tends to go against the market at the moment. So although the market's been coming down. Uh, aristocrats been going up over the last few weeks. Uh, so yesterday was a down down day as the market went up. So, but it's still looking encouraging. We've got some reasonable vo volume buying. The downside is, um, pressures are easing for aristocrats. So we quite like this stock at the moment. Uh, it's a good stock. It's come down into an area where there could have been some pocket support. So we're just looking at this. The average is being tested there. So we've got a few things here. Support, volume, average starting to show um, some signs of support. So, but you know that I have to go along a process to get con get confirmation of a trend in place because that's when I want to jump on it when I get confirmation of the trend. So that's aristocratic though. I'm still, still down at trend intensity rating of minus six. Okay, Endeavour's another one we looked at briefly. Moving against the flow again, it's had a good rally since uh, the start of June. It's broken to new highs. It's looking okay. Trend intensity rating is 10. Um, and so it looks fine. Volume's good. Momentum's good. Um, there's nothing to say, uh, get out of this one at the moment. So Endeavour is one of the stocks going against the flow. There's always a few there. Let's look at a couple of stocks that really have not done too well at all. And although they're a lot cheaper, we don't want to buy them maybe just yet. West Farmers is one. Okay, now it's been down in a series of lower lows, lower highs, surprise, surprise, it's come down from over 65 Dollars. It's now got down to almost forty dollars there on the low there. So that's been a pretty big, um, pretty big drop. But we have on the positive side, we've seen a little bit of volume. So my first thing is always a bit of support. Now there's no real support around here. There could be a bit back here, which is a bit hard to read. But there's a bit of volume support here. We can see a bit of nibbling here. The price went up. A bit of nibbling here. The price went up. Nothing convincing yet. And here again, we've, we've had a sell off in the high volume and a bit of more nibbling here in the rally. So, but we have this area up here, of course which is you know the downtrend line the moving average uh, and a little bit of resistance across here so this really at this stage is only early stages yet no trend turning aiming yet West Farms is still looking weak uh, on a, on a um, trend intensity basis at minus seven so so these stocks might look cheap so well maybe maybe it's time to buy just wait for the evidence to come down it may turn I'm prepared to give up a few dollars just to uh, for the confirmation. So that's West Farmers. Blue Scope's another one. I put nothing on this chart hardly at all because really that, that just tells you it all. Lower lows, lower highs, a downtrend, trend intensity rating of minus 10. There's really nothing much to look at there. Move on. Okay. Um, the opportunities will come, but not yet. Newcrest, another one. Broken bad support, trend intensity rating minus 10. Volume here, momentum week wouldn't even look at it at the moment until uh, we're going to get some lower prices, which is always nice. Okay, uh, and then we go to the positive side. We've got Beach Petroleum, which has really rallied probably um, from the entry, probably only 10%, but that's only in six months. So that puts us up about 20% on a year on an annualised basis. But 10% is good in six months, uh, and it's rallying well. Um, it's holding this chart trend. It's holding its average. Momentum is steady. Volume's a little bit different, but it's okay on the upside. So it still looks very constructive. Looking for a move perhaps up to R1, which is nearly up to nearly up to two dollars. There, trend intensity rating still plus seven for beach. So it's been a had a bit of a slow time here for a couple of months, but you know we have to endure that. And patience is key in these markets. Uh, don't try to look for something all the time. It's just not there. Wait to see what happens, and uh, the, the, the message will become clear at some stage. But at this one, at this time, beach patrolling is still going up. Remember, we had this smart guy Kerry Stokes on the menu on the on the on the register, I should say, which is always a good bit of support. Okay, next one we looked at. I looked at this one last week. It's outside outside my field of ASX 200, but I always like to show a few just so you get a bit of interest because we know some of these stocks are quite exciting. So Nanosonics, really, uh, we showed you last week this big long bit of support back here we had it. We've dipped right out, dipped our toes right into that area and we've had a good rally. Now, nothing to happen yet, but what I have got is I've got some good volume here. If I just squeeze this up a little bit, we can see some reasonable volume. The downside pressures are easing and we've broken through here. So what I'm looking for now is a pullback to a higher low and then a rally through there. But we'll just follow this one through a bit and see how it develops. Um, <coughs> Excuse me, it is a, uh, a smaller stock and it can bounce around quite, quite savagely. 
So we'll just keep an eye on this one and see how it performs. But it's looking interesting. Polynovo is another one we looked at last week, also looking interesting. So some of those stocks now having come well off, you know, 40, 50, 60% are starting to show a bit of interest. Some buyers are starting to flirt with these stocks. A couple of another ones, in looking in the tourism sector, Fight Centre, really nothing here. Fight Centre and Qantas are both sitting in this little trading in these ranges. There's really not a volume, not a volume here that's dull. This is flat. In the end, the 10 and 10 3 rating is still minus six for Fight Centre. So really nothing much there. Take on the risk if you want, but um, I don't really want that at the moment. Qantas, similar picture here. It's really just going sideways for the moment. 10 and 10 3 rating is minus nine. It is at the low of the, of the trading range. Which is, you know, it can be a good strategy actually. Some of these trading ranges to buy at the low, sells at the high. It's not what I do, but I do see um, a bit of support. Probably will come in for Qantas around here at the moment while things are still not a bit unsure. Um, but this is mixing the volume and the momentum is weak. So that's why we're getting a trend intensity rating of minus nine. Okay, then we go to another stock which has also had a real hammering. But are we ready to buy it yet? Probably not quite yet. Um, let me just squeeze down this volume for you. Okay, we had a good, really good rally back here uh, last year, the level 2021. 20, then we got out up here. Uh, the rally, this market has just dropped like a stone. You know, it's, it's amazing how some stocks just want to go up and they just want to go down. No matter what the news is, the good news, uh, when the market's going up, uh, the market will take it, but bad news it will ignore. The market's going down, it will ignore good news and will focus on bad news. That's the confirmation bias that we all have. Um, that's what you know can, can affect the way the market is, and that's just a, a rule of thumb when you look at a trend. So any news is bad news in these downtrends. So uh, down it goes. A bit of volume here. Now we're seeing a slight change in the shape here in the colours. So that's a good sign. There is obviously some buying nibbling down here. It's the early stages of reversal, and we've still got this fairly weak here at the moment. Trend intensity rating is minus seven. So some of these stocks just aren't really. Um, uh, worth worth looking at at the moment because they're not going up. Goodman Group, another stock, it's come down to support, found some good support here, it's quite long term support along through here. Um, and we had a good bounce off here last time, but you know, really looking at this here, we're probably here at the moment as we are here where all this occurred before we've got a trend reversal above this point here. We've got the, low, the, the high low, then we've got the reversal here. Again, we were down here, we're below the average. Volume is, let me just put this up a little bit so you can see a bit more on the volume. Uh, volume is pretty mixed or pretty red here. This is pretty weak. So the only thing we've really got is support. Sellers in, are in control and big support. So we're going to be entering a bit of a battle zone between buyers and sellers as they try and buy. The buyers think there might be a bottom and the sellers think there's still further to go down. Let the battle go on until we get a good shape in the chart. Okay, now uh, another exciting one for us is APA Group. Trending, it's, you know, when trends trend, they, you know, it doesn't really matter what's going on in the rest of the market. And we don't need many stocks to make, to make a lot of money. So uh, APA, I'm going to look at this one a bit more in um, trading tactics, where I'm going to talk, talking about sort of real perspective, not just what we want and what we think, um, what's really happening. But APA has done very well um, this year, since the start of the year. It started a trend back here in uh, late December, and it's really now pushing up highs last week, 12, 13, probably come off a bit today. But trend intensity rating is 10, with a trend reversal here, new high here. Odds are the price is more likely to be higher next week than, than it is this week. That defines a trend, okay? So um, it's all looking good. The volume's looking good. The MACD, MACD is looking good. So for APA Group, there is, again, no argument. So don't think, well, is this going to go higher or not? There's no point worrying about it. It probably will go higher. It may not, but when that, when that starts to happen, then we start, start to worry. But for the moment, APA Group has been a nice, nice trend. Okay, um, so that's really most of the stocks I'm going to have a look at today. It gives you an idea, flavour of what's going on. A couple of opportunities there for you at this stage. Um, so now I want to go into trading tactics. Uh, talking about real perspective, you know, why do you buy? Just a really simple reason as to why you buy. And uh, one of the things that I often do when, I, when I'm looking at charts is I clear the chart off. I get all my annotations off there, all my text off there, and I start again and review it all because there's you know, anchor bias, all sorts of bits and pieces you've got there that you want to hang on to, clear your mind, get rid of them. It's the best way to do it sometimes, especially if you're confused and unsure. And it happens with stocks. Unless they're trending, well, they're usually going up and down in one spot or going down, and I really don't care about those stocks. I want stocks that are going up. So I clear my chart, I clear my mind, and I look at this chart and I go, hello, maybe something's going on here. So I keep an eye on it. Okay, so 
APA group I talked about before. Um, you know, if it looks like a trend, behaves like a trend, then the odds are it probably is a trend. So, you know, all those reasons you want to doubt these things, don't doubt them. This is a clear trend in APA group. I've just got the price chart here. That's all I've got. We had a reversal back here in December. It broke to broke high. It had a really good momentum move up to the next resistance, which is the old highs. It's waffled around here. It's now starting to break through. This one hasn't been updated, but the next one I'll show you has been and starts to push through this high here. Infrastructure's all the rage at the moment, so it's getting plenty of attention because there's not a lot of infrastructure stocks on our stock market left anymore so you need to go to an ETF or something like that uh, to get exposure so we've taken it a step further and we add our indicators well first thing I'm going to go stock prices bump and grind their way high they don't go up the whole time and in fact once we got the entry on this one we actually spent about, spent about two months going sideways Stop didn't go off, so I just have to be patient and wait because I'm, I'm pretty sure the odds are in my favour and the momentum is going up. I have a stop in place to protect myself if it doesn't, but if I catch on this move here, this great move here, up to the highs here, then that's great. And now I'm maybe going to get another move higher here as it starts to break through the highs. So they don't just go up all the time. So you just have to be a bit patient sometimes, but every now and then there is a spurt higher and it's hard to know when that's gonna happen, but it does. With APA, we've got the entry of the 29th of December at 10.29, it's current price is 12.31, so it's up 18% in, um, well, six months pretty well, just over six months. So that's a pretty good return for this one. Uh, and that currently is in our five stock portfolio and takes up one fifth of it because we have five stocks and it's 20% of it. So that's why our high conviction works quite well and we don't need a lot of stocks to trend higher. I know it's been difficult over the last year, but that's what happens. But we're going to start, we're starting getting a few moves at the moment um, worth watching an APA group has been one of them. So there is not just, there, there are just not that many trends now, okay? So we can't do much about that. We can't make them happen. We just have to wait and be patient. But there will be. So is this one here? Okay, so I look at this chart here. Uh, I look at the price action. It's come down from here. It's rallied, made it made a high here. It's come back here, made no new low. And then it rallies up through here. So that, to me, is a trend reversal, a simple price trend reversal. And that's all I really need to know. Okay, because um, I can add all sorts of other things which will confuse me, complicate things, and I just don't need that to make money. Okay, so if I take this a step further and we go on and we add some supporting evidence which can help in these instances, I've got my little trend reversal above here. I've also got some great volume here, and I now see the momentum indicator is turning above zero. So this is our alignment of the stars that we're always looking for. So stock grade, our members will know what this stock is. Uh, it's, it's a good stock, it's broken high and it's moving up well, and it may well move towards this next resistance. So, um, you know, just, it's, it's a really simple thing. I've hardly got any lines on there. I've just seen, seen what the price is doing, the bit of volume. And if that doesn't, if the picture isn't as clear as that, don't trade it, simple as that. Because there are plenty of clear pictures out there, whether it be APA or this one. Okay, now I looked at a chart last week, which I showed you here, which was, uh, we saw a big market coming down to support down here. It's, it started to rally, it looks pretty interesting. So we get excited with these moves. So this hasn't created any trend reversal yet, but we see, we see the volume down here. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and we can see the momentum starting to tick high. I mean, the selling pressure is easing. Now, what I looked for here last week, and I'm just going to go to, the, go to this chart now, I hope. Um, and we can see it here is actually ResMed, which is actually the chart. And if we look here now, we've got this pullback this week. So what I was looking for was a pullback to new lows and then a break through this point up here to give me the trend reversal. So I really am being very conservative and waiting, waiting, waiting. Trend intensity rating gives me perspective. It's still minus seven. It might have overcome the average, but not a lot else. Volume is okay, but the MACD is weak, and there's no price reversal for me to base it on, which is the most important thing for me and gets the most weighting in the trend intensity rating. So this is still minus seven on ResMed. So we're going to be waiting a bit more on that one. Um, safe and conservative. Uh, win of the race in this instance. Okay, so that's uh, really what I want to talk to you about in uh, trading tactics. Um, just to give you an eye, keep it really simple, especially at the moment, because we want things to go up, we can try and look for things that aren't there, and we don't need to, we just have to wait. And there's a couple of stock picks that have come in this week, good ones that have done well. So, you know, it's just, uh, you just have to post. They, they will accumulate over time, depending on what the market does. Um, but for the moment, we just need to, to, to take the, the realistic view of how things work. 
Okay, so that's about all I've got for you today. Fairly quick and simple, but easy. The market's maybe getting a bit exciting, but just be a bit careful that tech stock really had the tech index. I know we've seen the stocks go up again today, but really we need a lot more confirmation before we're going to see a significant rally there. And we know what things like stocks like Netflix did uh, recently with its loss of subscribers. So things can change. What, what looks really good at the, for, for time being, you think, what, what can go wrong? Things can go wrong. Look at some of these stocks that have come down in that uh, tech space. Okay, so really uh, often a trend is clear to see. Don't overanalyze, don't do, get too deep into it. Take it at face value. A trend is a trend. You can see a trend, you can see a trend. And you know, it happens in front of your eyes. It don't, you don't need figures and numbers to, to confirm it. So, but with, with a trend, confirm with a couple of indicators, not too many indicators, just a couple. Um, and then you would buy when you get your signal and protect it just in case. So what I'm trying to do is educate people on the process to, 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 to make decisions. You don't have to use mine, you can use it as a template, you can use other things. But the main ingredients are what I'm trying to give people to, so they know how to trade and how to trade successfully. Okay, look, so I hope this has been a good week for you. Um, you know, it's exciting what the market is doing. Hopefully we can get a few things happening uh, soon, but uh, don't hold your breath too much. We've had a bit of a nasty sell-off recently, and this recovery is not looking fantastic at the moment. So stay safe, watch your trends, heed your stops, and I will see you all next week again.